Number 7. Clara Kraber The 20-year-old daughter of an affluent New York City family was arrested in September of 2020 for participating in political riots that resulted in an estimated $100,000 in damages. The destructive riots, which originated as fairly peaceful demonstrations, had reportedly unfolded in protest of the death of Daniel Prude, who'd passed away during an encounter with police in upstate New York on March 23rd of 2020. Clara Kraber, a student at Rice University in Texas, was one of the eight individuals taken into custody after police had intervened to break up the riots. The protesters had allegedly smashed store windows with bricks, ignited trash can fires, and plastered graffiti on various buildings throughout the city's Upper East Side. In a notebook that was later confiscated by the authorities, Kraber had expressed her desire for the United States to undergo a process of wealth redistribution. She had also detailed plans to occupy vacant luxury apartments around the city by staging break-ins with the help of locksmiths. The young woman had reportedly cited the likes of political figures such as Joseph Stalin and Leon Trotsky as the inspirations for her worldview. Following their arrest, the protesters were charged with felony rioting in addition to other related weapons and burglary offenses. Kraber became the subject of widespread criticism when the details of her arrest surfaced online. Her detractors viewed her actions as hypocritical, given the discrepancy between her ideology and her family's considerable wealth. Number 4. Lorena Daniela Aguirre In a viral YouTube video from 2016, a Mexican teen was shown attempting to bribe police officers after she drunkenly crashed her car into multiple parked vehicles. The incident was filmed and uploaded by a man named David Villa. After the video was widely disseminated on social media, the young woman, identified as 18-year-old Lorena Daniela Aguirre, became known online as Lady 100 Pesos. The nickname was a reference to the sum of money equivalent to about $5 she'd allegedly offered to officers at the scene. On April the 21st of 2016, Aguirre had gotten behind the wheel of her Nissan Rogue while she was intoxicated. She then plowed the SUV into several cars that had been parked on the street in the city of Guanajuato. As the responding officers attempted to take the drunk driver into custody, she reportedly offered them the aforementioned sum in exchange for them letting her go. Throughout the video, Aguirre had her cash and credit cards in hand as she desperately and fruitlessly tried to persuade the police to release her. The young woman had been in a car with two male companions, one of whom was reported as being the son of a local politician. Although it wasn't made clear whether Aguirre was actually wealthy, she'd evidently attempted to convey the illusion that she had enough money to make, granting her release worthwhile for the authorities. Nevertheless, she spent the night in jail and was ordered to pay a fine that was reportedly five times more than the amount she'd been offering to the officers. Number 5. Yun Lucy Lu Li and Oliver Carafa a wealthy Instagram influencer and her boyfriend were arrested on murder charges in June of 2021 after they'd spent three months on the run. Yun Lucy Lu Li and Oliver Carafa, a couple that the media dubbed the Millennial Bonnie and Clyde, were tracked down by the authorities and apprehended in the Hungarian capital of Budapest. They were alleged to have carried out the fatal shooting of their business associate Tyler Pratt in Ontario, Canada, a few months prior. Li, Li and Carafa had also been accused of attempting to murder Pratt's pregnant girlfriend in the fatal altercation, which reportedly erupted during a business meeting. Although the female victim ultimately survived the gunfire, she was forced to terminate her pregnancy after being hospitalized in the incident's aftermath. Within 24 hours of the shooting, the perpetrators fled to Eastern Europe, first arriving in Carafa's native Slovakia before making their way to Hungary. It was reported that Lee belonged to a wealthy Canadian family with ties to prominent figures in the country's Liberal Party. Carafa had previously spent five years in prison after he'd been found guilty in connection to a fatal car accident while driving under the influence of alcohol. Number 4. Saki Sudo In an autobiography published in 2016, Japanese millionaire Kusuki Nozaki boasted about how he spent roughly $26 million over his lifetime in his attempts to court a total of 4,000 women. The 77-year-old real estate mogul also reportedly wrote that his only motivation for making money was to use his wealth to aid him in his pursuit of attractive women. In 2018, Nozaki married a former adult film actress by the name of Saki Sudo. The businessman claimed that they'd first met at an airport when Sudo, who was 22 years old at the time, had helped him to his feet after he'd fallen to the ground. Nozaki had allegedly told the young woman 
that she would be his final romantic partner, a prediction that came to grim fruition only a few months into their marriage. On May the 24th of 2018, Nozaki was found dead at his Wakayama residence, and it was initially believed that the elderly man had passed away of natural causes. In April of 2021, however, Suda was taken into custody on suspicion of fatally poisoning her late husband. It had emerged that the couple were eating dinner together around the time of Nozaki's death, and a toxicology report on the man's corpse indicated the presence of a lethal stimulant in his system. Upon reviewing the widowed woman's internet search history, investigators learned that she'd researched the same stimulant drug that was later linked to Nozaki's death. Sudo stood to inherit a sizable portion of the millionaire's fortune before her suspected involvement in the man's death came to light. Number 3. The Couch Family In December of 2013, a teenager who'd killed four people while driving under the influence was handed down a controversially lenient punishment by a Texas judge. The fatal collision had occurred in the city of Burleson on June the 15th of that same year. Ethan Couch, aged 16, had allegedly gotten behind the wheel of a pickup while he was intoxicated. He then proceeded to speed through a residential area when he lost control of the truck and crashed into a group of people who'd been assisting another motorist who had car trouble. The accident resulted in four deaths and nine injuries, and Couch was consequently indicted on four counts of intoxication manslaughter. During the ensuing criminal trial, the defense argued that the teen suffered from a supposed psychological condition called affluenza. Couch's legal team claimed that the boy couldn't bear the responsibility for his actions due to the fact that his affluent upbringing had led to him possessing no understanding of boundaries or consequences. Although affluenza is not a medically recognized disease, Couch's lawyers convinced Judge Gene Hudson Boyd to spare the teenager any jail time and instead sentence him to 10 years of probation. It also emerged that Couch's parents, Fred and Tonya, had had several run-ins with the law themselves prior to their son's conviction, including one instance in which they were accused of driving another car off the road. Fred, who'd made millions of dollars from his sheet metal manufacturing business, had been charged with assault in connection to a domestic abuse incident involving Tonya, whom he later divorced. Judge Boyd's decision in Ethan Couch's case sparked outrage among those who considered it to be unjustly merciful towards the teen. Couch was detained once again in December of 2015 after he'd failed to report to his probation officer. He and his mother were eventually located in the Mexican resort city of Puerto Vallarta, and the young man subsequently spent two years in prison. In January of 2020, he allegedly committed an additional probation violation by failing a mandatory drug test. Today's topic was requested by Skylar B. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Fotis Dolos before she disappeared without a trace in May of 2019, Jennifer Dulles, aged 50, had been in the midst of a contentious legal struggle with her husband, Fotis. It had stemmed from the pair's divorce and the subsequent battle for the custody of their five children. In the mid-2000s, the couple had moved to Farmington, Connecticut, where they started their family and founded the luxury real estate development business that would eventually make them millionaires. Jennifer had reportedly alluded to the fact that her relationship with Fotis was eroding in a blog post she'd written in 2012. She officially filed for divorce in 2017, but vanished before the legal process was completed. Fotis publicly maintained his innocence in the wake of his estranged wife's disappearance. However, the real estate tycoon and his girlfriend were both taken into police custody about a month later on charges of tampering with evidence and hindering prosecution. Those charges were upgraded to capital murder and kidnapping in January of 2020. The authorities had been unable to locate Jennifer's body during their investigation. Nevertheless, they'd gathered enough evidence for prosecutors to formally inculpate Fotis in connection to his wife's disappearance and presumed murder. The real estate developer failed to report to court for an emergency bond hearing on January the 28th, and the police later found him in a catatonic state in his home after an apparent attempt to take his own life by way of carbon monoxide poisoning. He was transported to a New York City hospital where he ultimately passed away two days later. In a death note he'd left in his car, Fotis once more professed his innocence, writing, I refuse to spend even an hour more in jail for something I had nothing to do with. Number 1. Ashton Sachs In the late 1990s, 
Ashton Sachs was born into an affluent family from Orange County, California. His mother, Andra, had built a prosperous real estate business worth upwards of $80 million, and the five Sachs children therefore wanted for nothing. On February 9, 2014, however, 19-year-old Sachs carried out the murder of both of his parents at their multi-million dollar mansion in San Juan Capistrano. The teen had reportedly driven 20 hours from Seattle, Washington to Southern California in order to commit the cold-blooded double homicide. Investigators later established that he'd walked through the unlocked front door of his parents' residence before fatally shooting them in their bedroom. Sachs went on to fire shots at two of his younger siblings. His brother was left paralyzed as a result of the attack, while his sister narrowly avoided a bullet to the head while hiding under her bedsheets. In the immediate aftermath of the incident, Sachs fully cooperated with detectives as they attempted to track down his parents' killer. The young man had reportedly attempted to confuse the investigation by giving the authorities the names of former business partners and other individuals who may have sought to harm his family. The police soon identified Sachs as a suspect due to mounting evidence against him, and he ultimately confessed less than a month after the shooting had taken place. When investigators asked him what his motive for the violent crime had been, Sachs blamed his parents for his depression and expressed his belief that he'd been their least favorite child. In October of 2016, he was sentenced to two life sentences without the possibility of parole. Thanks for watching. Would you rather be rich and ugly or poor and beautiful? Let us know in the comments section below.